Hi, I'm Chris Zitko. I'm here with eComfort with Eric as well from Nortz. And we had a couple of questions from our customers that we get asked every day. Uh, one of the customer's questions is, how does a tankless water heater work and how is it different from a storage tank? Tankless water heater works on demand. That's uh, different a little bit from a, a storage tank, which constantly heats water throughout the rest of the day. So as I'm talking to you here right now, if I had a tankless water heater at home like this one, I'm not using hot water. It's sitting there, sitting idle and not making any hot water, not using gas. Uh, if I had a storage tank at home, I'm talking to you, it's still heating up water I'm never gonna use uh, because I'm here talking to you guys. Uh, by the fact that it works on demand, and in general, most of hot water usage is about 30, per, 30 minutes per person per day. So it could only be 30 minutes that you're actually using gas to make hot water versus all the other times with your storage tank that it's heating up all day, every day. What makes a tankless hot water heater go? In a, a tank, normally it's just a reservoir. You open up a hot water fixture and that causes pressure differential and then it pulls the water out of the tank. Uh, on a tankless water heater, uh, there's a flow sensor assembly. Uh, and this basically meters the water flow from your open hot water fixture. This measures your incoming water temperature. Uh, you have a general set temperature on the heater of 120. Uh, so from these three inputs, so we know how much gas to actually uh, input into the water to get that groundwater temperature up to the set point of the heater. This flow sensor is tucked behind the circuit board. And this is a condensing model heater. Um, from uh, the water controls down at the bottom, and this she goes into the secondary heat exchanger. Um, from the uh, secondary heat exchanger, uh, as it leaves that, um, it will be 20 degrees warmer. It does that basically by recirculating the exhaust flue gases that would normally come out the flue stack at high temperatures uh, to preheat the water in the secondary heat exchanger. So now your groundwater temperature is 20 degrees warmer. It goes into your primary heat exchanger, which is under direct fire load. Because this is now 20 degrees warmer, this heat exchanger has to heat, use less gas to heat the water the rest of the way. Uh, so that'll open up a more uh, available hot water usage for other fixtures, or in general, just use less gas. So how safe is a tankless water heater in comparison to maybe like a tank style water heater? As a tank, uh, the main uh, issues with uh, water heating is uh, specifically the water quality. Uh, water quality as it gets heated up produces scale. In storage tanks, it usually sells at the bottom, and those are the type of fires that you typically see where the bottom falls out and then you have water damage. Uh, with a tankless water heater, uh, the scale that does form would adhere to the uh, heat exchangers and the coils. Uh, so periodically, you might have to, if you aren't uh, treating the water quality, uh, to flush the heater out. Um, this unit itself is one of the easy units. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? This is one of the, our best selling units as far as the Norris brand is concerned. One of the biggest benefits for this unit when you're comparing it to other tankless is you'll notice that the water connections are on top. This, this specific design and improvement on this product was driven by installers and users who want to try tankless. Why can't you make it easier to, yeah. for us to actually try it? And in the event that you should want to go back to a tank, you technically could because we didn't take anything apart at that uh, uh, storage tank site. Uh, conventional tankless water heaters have all the water connections on the bottom, so there's additional hardware plumbing. for plumbing unless you install the heater way up high uh, to accommodate those um, uh, nuances with the tankless water setup. Uh, so we still do have those uh, units with the water connections on the bottom, so if, uh, you, if plumbers still like to uh, install those type of units, could take half a day typically. Uh, but with the easy units, we've seen a uh, uh, getting feedback from installing contractors that are actually installing in less than an hour. So, Off the top of the units, it can be uh, vented with 2 inch PVC. Uh, you can vent that up to 60 feet. If you want to go even further than that, uh, then you can bush up to 3 inches, you can go up to 100 feet. In warmer climate regions, it can be installed outdoors with just a, a vent cap that you purchase as an additional accessory. Uh, but for a tank replacement, uh, we give you all the necessary tools to actually replace the tank with a tankless unit uh, and all the venting to get it out to the roof stack. Uh, but basically you adapt a flexible vent pipe material that will funnel in through uh, your existing three or four inch round stack. And you can actually do the venting installation setup uh, at the time that you get to the job site and drain the water here. That will typically take 30 to 40 minutes and that's plenty of time to actually prep the vent. So once you're done prepping the vent, uh, your tankless or your tank water heaters are already uh, finished draining. You can cart that out the way, install your tankless water heater, then just connect the venting back to the heater and you're good to go. If you are running the um, flex pipe through an existing chimney, make sure it's not 
an existing chimney that is working with a furnace or a boiler system with it. It has to be proprietary. So it can't have another exhaust system connected to it because that will melt any of the materials that are going with that. It could also do backdraft into the room. Well, I appreciate you coming out and helping us out and uh, talking about your wonderful easy installation Nord systems. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Eric. Chris. Good meeting you.